there's a good chance you've never heard of BlackRock. Founded in only 1988, in less than 30 years, this American financial firm would grow to become the company that owns the world, managing assets worth $6.3 trillion. These are assets that belong to their clients, mainly the pension funds of ordinary people, teachers, police officers, nurses, and many more. And that's just the beginning. BlackRock has also developed a software platform called Aladdin to perform risk analysis for its clients. It receives sensitive data from banks, insurance companies, and other important institutions. Through Aladdin, BlackRock has insights about the management of financial assets worth another $20 trillion. BlackRock also has shares and voting rights in many of the biggest European companies, in sectors such as energy, oil and gas, transportation, food, and of course, finance. The company holds public debt in the form of bonds and has real estate interests. And still, there's more. Our rock, you see. And still, there's more. Our rock, you see, wears many hats. Aside from being an investor, it is also an auditor and an advisor. Governments and central banks invite a BlackRock subsidiary called BlackRock Solutions to audit them and to provide advice about the management and rescue of banks. Yet at the same time, BlackRock is often a major shareholder in these same banks. In other words, the company often sits on both sides of the table. BlackRock Solutions gets privileged access to highly sensitive information, information that could be valuable to BlackRock itself. Does this constitute a conflict of interest? No, says BlackRock, which claims that the company has established Chinese walls between its different subsidiaries. In January 2018, BlackRock's founder and chairman, Larry Fink, sent a letter to all of the CEOs of the companies BlackRock has invested in, asking them to do more than deliver financial performance and make a positive contribution to society. So BlackRock not only owns the world, it also wants to save it? Who runs the world, BlackRock and Vanguard? This is the biggest and dumbest conspiracy theory going around on TikTok. This idea that BlackRock and Vanguard is somehow like these evil corporations sitting high up in their conference rooms. BlackRock and Vanguard are just investment firms, you guys. You and me can put our money in, and most of these mom and pop places, even public pensions for teachers, college workers, and government workers, targeted individual retirement accounts for you and me. So who really owns all the houses that BlackRock is buying up? thousands of individuals and pension plans and teachers. So then should we instead direct our wrath at corporations like Amazon instead of BlackRock and Vanguard? No, these are also publicly owned, publicly traded companies. And these billionaire founders inspired the innovation that drives America. Before you get mad at me, I do agree that it's a problem that investment firms are buying up all the housing inventory. I'm definitely open to the discussion about wealth inequality that's only been increasing for the younger generation. Let's talk about those issues, not conspiracies. Let's talk about how BlackRock manipulates the crypto market. Now we're not jumping into any conspiracies, we're just gonna jump straight into facts. And we're gonna start when Elon Musk came out and said Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoin, which was on May 12th, the day of the market crash. And let's listen to what Kathy Wood with ARK Investments has to say about that. Elon uh, probably got a few calls from institutions. I noticed that BlackRock is their number three shareholder and Larry Fink, is the CEO is focused on uh, ESG and especially on climate change. Uh, so I'm sure BlackRock registered some complaints. Now, sure, Tesla is a public traded company, which means anyone can invest into them. So why does it matter if BlackRock's invested into the company? Well, BlackRock not only controls $9 trillion, making it the world largest money manager in the world, but it also runs a massive technology platform known as Aladdin, which actually oversees over $21 trillion and is utilized by over 400 153 financial institutions and companies. And BlackRock owns over 38% of ETFs on the US market. But why does any of that matter? Well, as the largest financial asset manager group, they're out to look for the best possible investments for their client, which in their eyes is ESG standards, which are gonna be economic sustainable growth investments. And if you didn't know, the G20 summit just took place, which is pretty much a forum ran by the 20 most wealthiest country. And they come together and address some major issues in the global economy. But guess who got to speak there? Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, and here's what he had to say. And so our job is to find effective investments. And part of that, our job is to guide and to shape our investors as to where they invest their money. 
Now, virtually he goes on and talks about the most important investment in their eyes is going to be infrastructure and particularly renewable infrastructure, which the world economic and everybody has been covering for a long time. So let's tie this back into Elon Musk. About a week after Elon Musk came out and said Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoin, he came out and said he spoke with the American Bitcoin miners, which includes Michael Saylor with MicroStrategy and some of the top US North American miners. And Michael Saylor responded to his tweet saying the miners have agreed to form the Bitcoin Mining Council to promote energy uses, transparency, and accelerate sustainable initiatives worldwide. Now, for you guys that don't know, Michael Saylor is the CEO of MicroStrategy, which company's top institutional holders just so happens to be BlackRock. And also part of that mining council includes Argo Blockchain, which BlackRock so happens to be investors in, Marathon, which BlackRock also just so happened to increase their ownership in, and Riot, you guessed it, is also invested into by BlackRock. And then what really blew my mind is that while all this was happening, BlackRock just so happened to expand its China footprint with wealth management license, which is where BlackRock will help support China in building a sustainable ecosystem for investing, which all just so happens to be coincidentally timed perfectly with China banning crypto due to unsafe coal mining measures because it's bad for the environment. And then on top of this, while all these miners are flooding China and moving into other environmentally sustainable areas to mine, guess who just so happens to be buying a ton of Bitcoin miners? The Bitcoin Council. So like Fink said, they shape their investors. 